This season preview is brought to you by Manscaped's brand new ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. This luxurious lather cleanses and nourishes in just one step. Using coconut water, green tea, and aloe, this non-greasy daily formula is naturally hydrating and rich in antioxidants to revitalize the look and feel of your hair. So head on over to manscaped.com and use the promo code SACCITY for 20% off and free worldwide shipping. The new ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner from Manscaped. Take care of hair everywhere. We are diving into the Packers and the Vikings and their season preview. We're going to start on the offensive side of the ball for the Green Bay Packers. Aaron, what will this offense look like this year? No Devontae Adams, a whole new group of wide receivers coming in to be Aaron Rod to fight for Aaron Rodgers' uh, attention. What is this offense going to look like this season? Yeah, I think you're going to get a lot of what it looked like a couple of years ago. We talked about um, Aaron Rodgers in the back-to-back MVP years, but Aaron Rodgers is not one of those quarterbacks that comes out every year and throws over 600 times. As a matter of fact, he's only thrown over 600 times once in his career. I think the Green Bay Packers are going to do exactly what they did in 2020 when they went 13-3 and three under Matt LaFour. They're going to run the football. They're going to run a lot of play action, and they're going to look for those big plays as they come. Remember, in 2020, he only threw for 4,200 yards. He had 48 touchdowns to five interceptions. The year before that, he only had 26 touchdowns to four interceptions when LaFleur first got there. They ran the ball a ton. I think that's what they go back to without Devontae Adams and a real threat on the outside that's established. I think the Green Bay Packers lean on an A.J. Dillon, lean on an Aaron Jones out of the backfield to create mismatches that way against linebackers and safeties. And don't feel the pressure to, to have to find that deep threat into Devontae Adams or get, a, get the ball to a guy 20 times in a game or whatever his target volume is because they don't have that guy on the roster. So I think it's smarter coaching from LaFleur, more um, patience on the offensive side of the football. But ultimately, as weird as this sounds, I think it could lead to more efficiency. And we talked about this with Kansas City losing to Tyreek Hill. It's never good when you lose a player of Devontae Adams caliber. But what it does do to defenses is now defenses don't focus on Devontae Adams. Now defense come into the game and they say, well, what do we need to do to stop this offense? They have no idea. They've never seen it. So they start to like use resources to stop Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. And that's going to allow some of these young guys, a Romeo Dubs, a, Dubs. Uh, and Alan Lazard, to make plays in one-on-one until the defenses start to adjust to that. So um, there could be some, some early season offensive output that's uh, surprising for the Green Bay Packers because defenses aren't sure what they're going to do. How long do you think it's going to, obviously lots of new faces, how long do you think it's going to take for this offense to really be cooking on all cylinders? Like, how long do you think it's going to take for this uh, this offense to fire? How long does it take Aaron Rodgers to walk from the locker room to the field? Ooh, I don't know. I haven't timed that. I didn't bring my stuff. The minute Aaron right. Rodgers steps on that field, that offense will be fine. Okay. Aaron Rodgers is on the field, that offense will be fine. We okay. can point to the, the playoff game where they struggled. Yeah, it happens. They'll have bad games. They had a bad game week one last year when they got blown out. <laughs> right. We, and we were like, Oh, what's going on with the Packers? Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> as long as Aaron Rodgers is under center and healthy, they will be fine. I don't care who the wide receivers are. So let's do some predictions here. Uh, we're not going to do the, like the record predictions, but I want to do some offense predictions here. Who is the leading wide receiver at the end of the season for the green Bay Packers? AJ. Are you talking yards wise, reception wise? Who, like... who at the end of the season, who are we going to look at and say that's Aaron Rodgers' new number one target? I, I I think it's going to be Christian Watson. That's that's my thought process. I think he's going to come up to that to that level. Uh, I believe Alan Lazard will start that trend, but the talent will just win out. Uh, obviously, always barring health, of course, because you know he's already been on the PUP list and already been taking it slowly, but I think Christian Watson will be that guy by the end of the season. Aaron Jones. <laughs> the wide res- a wi- a Aaron wide Jones receiver. will lead in Aaron Jones will probably lead that team in catches and receiving yards this year. It's gonna be crazy. We talked about that in our, we talked about that a little bit in our offseason. If you missed our offseason previews for or our training camp previews and stuff with the Green Bay Packers, it's available on our YouTube at Sac City Pod. I mean, just thinking about that of Aaron Aaron Jones leading his team in rushing and receiving, and that being possible, and like uh, no, like well, when you he won't lead him in rushing, he won't lead him in rushing. He'll he'll have eight, Aaron Jones will have between seventy and ninety catches this year, 
and he will have between 800 and 1,000 yards, and that will lead the, the Green Bay Packers in receiving this season because there's going to be so many other guys. And what's the rushing total? A uh, couple hundred. He's not going to run the ball that much. Wow, okay. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll see. Maybe, his maybe 400 max on the ground. We'll his name pop up in the prop bets, and maybe I'll, you'll take it. Rest up, and I thought you would have uh, in that. Um I have been having a hard time with this and I, I really like there's something about Romeo our, our, our guy Romeo Dubs out of the rookie out of Nevada and AJ you brought up Christian Watson rookie wide receiver North Dakota State being the number one guy at the end of the season when it's all said and done for Aaron Rodgers I I don't know if correct me if I'm wrong especially you Aaron with the scouting that you've done on these receivers and I see George Pickens and Romeo Dubs as very similar wide receivers uh, that in the sense that these guys just attack the ball. They go up and they get the ball. They're very aggressive wide receivers. They get the job done, but job done when it comes to that. And I think that that I'm going to put my, I'm going to, I'm going to say that, that Romeo Dubs is the leading wide receiver on this team at the end of the year. Cause I, I do think, I do think that, you may be right that Aaron Jones might be the leading pass catcher. He might lead in receptions, right. might lead in yards. But at the end of the season, when you're looking at these wide receivers and you say who's going to be the number one guy, it's going to be Romeo Dubs because I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to lean on him early on in the season. He's going to prove that he can do it, go up and get those balls, and then he's just going to just ride him the rest of the season and build that chemistry. And I think that's the that's going to be the guy for, for Aaron Rodgers. So my – I like what you're saying there, but I think that style of play is a opportunistic type of thing for Aaron Rodgers. Like, think about, and I'm not saying like this is how he's going to be used because I thought about Romeo Dubs too. But think about what Marquez Valdez Scantling did in that offense that deep threat, that go get it, that high point type of receiver. And then think about what Devontae Adams did. Aaron Rodgers to have a leading receiver has to be a guy who can run a crisp route, who can get to a spot really quickly, not just down deep down the field and beat the receiver up top one on one. So I think that will limit Romeo Dubs a little bit into being the number one guy. Whereas, you know, we talked about Christian Watson where he can do those things too, but his, his route running is pretty decent as well. We talked about the drops, of course, but that's when he wasn't being given the opportunity. It was almost a surprise for him when the ball was coming his way in North Dakota State at times because they ran the ball so heavy. So while I like both their talents, and I believe that Romeo Dubs and Christian Watson can be a very great young tandem for the Green Bay Packers, I think I think he has to do a little bit more than what his skill set has offered so far, or at least from what I saw in Nevada, uh, for him to become the leading wide receiver on that team. First of all, it's disrespectful to George Pickens that you call Romeo Dubs similar. Um, no, no, not like not George no. Pickens is arguably we are. There were arguments that he was the most talented wide receiver in the draft. That was not the reason he didn't get drafted early. Like a couple years ago, he was a first round talent people were talking about him being the number one wide receiver off the board off the field stuff meant not mental stuff but his yeah. his up here was not all there as far as like <laughs> how he acted uh, very immature as a player there were a lot of talks about that and if you ever listen to him interview even the interview he just did you can sense some of that like his immaturity as a as a like a, a man right so i think that was more of the issue there physically I don't think there is a receiver that was as physically gifted as George Pickens coming into the draft. It was about other things. Romeo Dubs is nice, but I don't want to get caught up in this early training camp connections and, and preseason. Like, oh, he's looking good. Like, I there are yeah. guys that have come out and have done that, and that's great. But when we get to game one and we see what the Packers roster looks like, what those wide receivers, who's out there. It's going to be Alan Lazard. Yeah. It's going to be some form of Sammy Watkins yeah. or some, some veteran and Randall Cobb. Does and it have so to be? That's the point. That's the <laughs> point I'm making is that Romeo Dubs is not really going to get that opportunity to show out not until not one really. of those guys go down. And he'll get, he'll mix in there unless he just breaks out. I, have, I haven't seen a Green Bay wide receiver come out their rookie year with yeah. Aaron Rodgers and produce, and that includes Devonte Adams. It, it 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 really could, and that's that's the thing. Like it, it could go, and I don't think any of us have a wrong answer here. I, it could be Remember Jake Kumaro too. Remember Jake Kumaro yeah. and or the, uh, the other guy that they loved in training camp. I forget his name. The uh, um, whoa, what was his name? Wow. Like there was another wide receiver that came out. and They loved him. Like oh, he's going to be Aaron Rodgers next thing. And next thing you know, he's not even on the roster. Like, but he was playing really really well in preseason. I forget his name. 
Um, Aaron Rodgers loved him. He was mad that they let him go. But I know what you're he talking never, about. He never made yeah, it. Yeah, there was like, a whole big deal. So I just, I'd just i like to just caution. This Pump Romeo Dubs hype is starting to get to that point where I'm like, man, I'm, I'm almost even believing. And I do believe he has talent to play in this league. But I don't know if I see this year number one receiver potential in him. I know Christian Watson has that potential. Is he going to get the opportunity? I don't know. I think it's Alan it, Lazard or it's Aaron Jones. Like those yeah. are the two that I'm looking. It could, at. it could, and it could be just as simple as that. Is it? I could see that at the end of the season where it is just as simple as Alan Lazard. He's been there. He's yeah. been that. He's been that dude for Aaron Rodgers before. Like Alan Lazard, and then Aaron Jones, and that, and that's it. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing special. There's no flashiness out of this Packers offense. It's straightforward. Lazard and Aaron Jones. Uh, AJ, on the defensive side of the ball, though, uh, the, lots of talent here, uh, including a star cornerback in Jair Alexander. Lots of talent on this Green Bay Packers defense. What's your biggest concern, though, for this team uh, moving forward? Yeah, uh, my biggest concern, and honestly, I'm nitpicking here, it's going to be if they have the ability to stop the run. I think that's the one thing that the Green Bay Packers are really going to need to focus on on the defensive side of the ball. Last year, they allowed 4.7 yards per carry. That was the third highest in the league. I think they were tied with another team for that. Uh, but the thing for me is I say it's a concern because that's what the issue was last season. I think they've done a fantastic job addressing that point in this offseason. A lot of people look at the loss of Zadarius Smith and immediately think that this Green Bay Packers defense is going to be worse. And I don't think that's the case. Uh, I mean, you look at what happened last season and some of these guys that are coming back that just emerged and had a sort of a breakout season, like Rashawn Gary, who just went scorched earth, had nine and a half sacks, eight tackles for loss, a staggering 28 QB hits. Like he was getting after the quarterback, along with Preston Smith, who was doing that. You look on the defensive line and Kenny Clark and Dean Lowry both had noticeable seasons, getting better each and each year. And then they took, while we were sitting here, Asking the same question we've asked for 20 years. Are they going to take a receiver in the first round? No. They took two first-round picks and addressed their defensive line in two speedy guys and two powerful guys out of Georgia in uh, Quay, uh, Quay Walker and a Devontae Wyatt, guys who can stop the run, guys who can stop the gap, and also get after the quarterback. And they didn't even get to scratch the surface in Georgia because there were so many great players on that defense that they were able to rotate and keep these guys fresh. So I think they did a fantastic job in the off season uh, addressing this run issue. And I think you're going to see it jump up in waves and this defense is going to figure that issue out as well as being good in most everywhere else. I don't want to say they're going to be the best defense in the league. I think there's some other teams that can make that argument, but I think they'll be in the conversation. This has been a defense that has been right there for the last couple of years. And it just seems like when they get that one thing figured out, something else just kind of bites at their ankles that they have to fix. And, I think they're I think they're getting it put together this season. I think you should have did it. I think you should have did it. I think this is the best defense in football this year. I think it's better than Buffalo's. I think it's better than Baltimore's and New Orleans. Um, I think this is the best defense in football in 2022. And I'm not just trying to throw a hot take out there. Like when you look at this roster from top to bottom. There are studs everywhere. We didn't even mention the fact they went out and got Jaron Reed, a, a run yeah. stopper from Kansas City, who's a legit defensive tackle on the inside. You have a Preston Smith, Devondre Campbell, Rashawn Gary, and Quay Walker, arguably the best linebacking core in all of football if Quay Walker comes out and does what he's supposed to do. Devontae Wives, a defensive tackle out of Georgia, who's really, really good first-round pick and is a backup. So he's not even going to come in and be asked to play a full complement of snaps. And then we forget about the back end. Not only are they getting a Jair Alexander back on the, on the back end, but you add an Adrian Amos, right, who has a ton of experience on that back end with a Darnell Savage who played a lot better over the past couple of seasons. And they get veterans like a Rasul Douglas who's been in the league, knows how to play the cornerback position, and then Eric Stokes who I believe – I know when they picked him a couple years ago, we weren't happy about it. He is going to be one of the best young corners in football. He is that good, and he played that well last year. Uh, this is the best defense in the NFL, in my opinion, going into 2022. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. <laughs> you had me. You had me looking. I was like, you said it. You said it, and you were like, oh, no, spicy. Not meant to be a hot take. And I was like, man, that's I spice a little bit. I don't know where I stand on that. I don't know how to feel about it. And then you brought up Eric Stokes, who Eric I loved Stokes. last season. 
I that love Eric Stokes. <laughs> I can't with you. That that defense. If you can't name a defense right now in the NFL that's loaded top to bottom with just names, and we could just you know maybe it's on paper, maybe it doesn't well, plan out, whatever. But well, well, can't name I mean, a defense with, that with, has the name without like the that. injuries. Without the injuries, the Buffalo Bills was the other team that I was thinking about. I mean, because like. It, like that's the only like that's why I said argument because I I do understand like if Jordan Poirier and Micah Hyde are good to go when Tre'Davious White gets back what they expect Kyrie Elon to be don't forget we enjoyed watching Carlos Basham and um and uh, Gregory Rousseau they added Von Miller they they have on paper studs basically everywhere but it's just is it going to come back together they did a very damn good job last season except for the one game that everyone wanted to talk about against the Patriots. And so that's why looking at this and what they did, like this draft, and I don't know if we, I know we said they had a good draft, but I don't know. I think we underrated how great the Packers first couple rounds in this draft were because this, this they is did not, a this hell is of not a job. something that's uncommon though. They've done this year after year. They've been loading up on defense for years yeah, and people years. keep mad and crying and stuff because they don't go out and get a wide receiver. But this is what green Bay has done. They've loaded up on a defensive talent and with, when you've got a Super Bowl caliber quarterback in Aaron Rodgers and you have a great defense, you can win in this league. And you don't need the best skill position players. Like, we, I've, I've preached this ad nauseum about why take wide receivers early when you can go get great linemen. Or they have a solid group to great offensive line, good running backs in the backfield, Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, and a defense that is arguably right there. And I think they're the best defense in football going into this season. And when you asked AJ that question – what concerns you? The only thing that concerns me on the Green Bay defense, only one thing can derail this defense, in my opinion, is if they have injuries. That's it. I don't think anything else will derail this team. If they're healthy, they are going to be elite. I'm glad I didn't ask you that question because that's really that's that is a very uh, generic answer to what can hold you. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I still would have gave you all. I still would have yeah, gave you I'm all. Aware. It, I, I'm like aware. I said, I had to nitpick because I, like I was like, it if is. I had to pick so, one but, thing. But so for for what we have to watch for with the Packers, we've talked about this with other teams before. They're almost they're, they're pretty much a shoe in on barring anything crazy to get into the playoffs. They have to get over that hump in the po- postseason. And we normally ask what you're watching for this season. It's not what we're watching for this season with the, with the Green Bay Packers. It's what we're watching for in the playoffs with the Green Bay Packers. So Aaron, how do the Packers get over the hump? in the postseason yeah i this might be a sim another easy one it's simple for me they got to get out of their own way they got to get out of their own way if you take just flash back to the the games they've lost to the 49ers over the past couple of seasons or the tampa bay buccaneers in the nfc championship games it's what do i do on fourth down it's coaching decisions it's a blocked punt here and there it's i can't stop third and nine when the ball's handed off to debo samuel like They're like basically trying to give you the ball back and you're not making these plays. They can't get out of their own way when it mattered most. And that's been in the playoffs. It's reminiscent of when we talk about the Dallas Cowboys not being able to get out of their own way or the the Los Los Angeles Chargers not being able to get out of their own way. It's like something in the playoffs happened where they get real tight and everybody on the field is real tight, except for maybe Aaron Rodgers, who we all know he's confident, but they just have to find a way to get out of their own way. Stop making the stupid penalty on third and long. Stop giving up, you know, rushes up the middle to block a punt late in the game. And we saw it again with the Niners game last year, 10 points on the offensive side of the football, 10 points from an Aaron Rodgers led team and Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams had already connected for 90 yards in the first half. Devontae Adams didn't have a catch the rest of the game. Like these kind of things are Matt LaFleur comes to coaching how are you scheming? How are you making adjustments at halftime and then being able, being able to close out games? Uh, it's it's hard to explain because I don't think it's anything from a talent perspective or anything they can't overcome. They just have to get out of their own way. Makes sense. That's it. Yeah, and they're it, in the Super it, Bowl. It, it, seem, it, it seems like the answers for the Green Bay Packers and everything really laid out for the season is very simple for the Packers. It's stay healthy. Get out of your own way, and you have a damn good shot at winning the Super Bowl this year. That's that's Absolutely. that's it right there. Let's take a look at the odds, though. Our prop bets for the Green Bay Packers. If you're new to the show, uh, we are giving you our locked and loaded bets for the Green Bay Packers. Over 11 and a half wins at plus 110. 
Over 31 and a half Aaron Rodgers passing touchdowns is at minus 115 and over 1300 and a half total total Aaron Jones yards is also at minus 115. There's some there's a, there's a juicy one. There's a juicy plus matchup that are plus plus odds there for wins. Aaron, what are you locking and loading here? Uh, I will take the under. Lock in, lock in my. I know it's not on there, but whatever the under is to that Aaron Jones is, I'm I'm locking that in. I don't think he gets the 1,300 yards. I don't think Ooh. he has enough. I don't think he has enough rush yards to do it. Wow. I think he, so. Like this goes back to this goes back to what you said earlier. You brought up the fact that he's going to have around a thousand receiving yards. Eight? No, I don't say a thousand. Eight hundred to a thousand, okay. so, somewhere in there. I'd say he can get eight hundred receiving yards, uh, but I don't think he's going to get the ball enough on the ground. I think AJ Dillon is going to be a huge factor this year on the ground because I do think they want to deploy Aaron Jones more in the pass game. I could see ten carries, eight to ten carries a game for Aaron Jones. Eight to ten carries a game is not going to get him enough yards. It's going to be you know, 45 yard games, 40 yard games, 30 yard games. Maybe every once in a while he has a big game and goes for 80 or something, but I, I don't see that a lot. Um, it would take some, some, it would take some magic to me for him to get to 1300 total yards. I think between him and, and AJ Dillon, I think they just split it too much time. So I, I want to make the comparison to, to out. Al- so maybe like an Alvin Kamara type season, where it's really mostly in the passing game and then the rushing yards are are there, but like not because that lot. So, so really, you're not, you're, it's actually the flip flop. You're really thinking he's going to be killing it in the passing game and not really like, yes, he's like going eight, to be more of a receiver than he is a rusher. That's going to be a running receiver. That's fair. It's fair. Yeah. I mean, let's, 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 let's look at, let's look, I mean, you can, let's look at a guy like an Alvin Kamara. Say it, whether it's reversed or not, Alvin Kamara is always around like 12, 1300 yards, whatever combined, and he's never ran for a thousand yards, right? So that's the kind of season I see from an Aaron Jones. Could it be close to the 1300 yards? Yeah, but I just don't think he gets there. I think it's eight and four, um, seven and five, you know, whatever about it is. 1200. Around 11 to 1200 yards total, which is about where Aaron Jones probably should be at, anyways, right. um, if he was just strictly a running back. So uh, yeah, I just I just think AJ Dillon's too much of a factor in the run game in order they're not going to just stop going to him. Okay, AJ, what are you locking and loading here on the prop bets of the Green Bay Packers? You know, so last year uh, I had Aaron Rodgers as my uh, MVP. Uh, so knowing this year that I can't go that way again, I don't know he can do three in a row. I do believe he's going to throw over thirty one and a half touchdowns though. Uh, that just seems like something he's going to be very good at doing is putting the ball in the end zone uh, and with more weapons, so to speak, I I think you can lock that one in. I mean, you had 48 last or 37 last season, 48 the year before that. There was a slight drop off before it. But other than that, I I think he, you know, that that, what's it called? Haskua, his his psychedelics. uh, It starts with an H. Uh, I can't remember how they they pronounce it. It ain't my type of shit, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, he's going to be real zen all season. He's going to be one with the game of football and the ball and the the passing (laughs) talent is just going to flow out of him naturally. So uh, lock in in, uh, over 31 and a half touchdowns uh, for Aaron Rodgers this season. So I'm really kind of surprised at both of you here with the – with the prop bets that we had listed here, one of them was over 11 and a half wins is plus money and plus 110 here. Obviously, it's not like plus like a lot. You don't win like that much money if you were to to get that right. But we'll get into our, our schedule predictions here. When we covered the NFC North during the offseason, Aaron, you had 12 and 5, AJ 13 and 4, and myself 12 and 5. Neither of you wanted to go down that route of locking in 11 and a half wins. The Sac City is now brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming products, precision engineered tools for those family jewels. Manscaped performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 6 million worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. 20% right now. Go to manscaped.com. Free shipping. Type in the, uh, the code Sac City. And if my math correct, that's 12 million balls, Vinny. So many balls, man. That's so many balls. So many balls. 
That's right, the Performance Package 4.0 has arrived and it's a game changer. Inside the package, you'll find the 4.0 trimmer, the weed whacker, the ear and nose hair trimmer, the ball deodorant, the crop reviver toner to shine those balls up real nice, and you get a pair of boxer briefs. Plus, you get the, the wonderful newspaper that Vinny's wife likes to read when she's sitting on the toilet. <laughs> Sorry, Alicia, shout out. Um, just make sure you go to manscaped.com. Save, save, save. You get 20% off. Plus, free shipping. And that paper right there is beautiful. You get that in the package as well. Type in that promo code SAC City. And again, unlock your confidence. And as always, use the right tools for those family jewels. Aaron, I'll start with you for record predictions. Why did you not lock that in? And what do you have them going? You got to get my handy dandy paper. Listen, 12, 12 wins is a lot. Uh, regardless of what team you are, 12 wins is a lot of wins. Um, I'm not banking on 12 wins. I just, I'm not betting on 12 wins. 12 wins in the NFL is hard. So you're talking about one or two games here, but Green Bay is going to win a lot of games. They're going to win. I mean, like I said, I have them. At, I still have them at twelve and five. I have them beating most teams, losing to Buffalo, Minnesota, Philly, the Rams, and Miami. Four of those on the road. The other game is the Rams at home. Uh, but I just, I think Green Bay is too good of a football team to be bad. I'm not going to pick them to be bad. And then I think they're. It's it's just not twelve. I'm never going to bet for twelve wins. Like twelve wins is. It can happen, but it's too much to bet on. So I'm never going to lock that in. I think Green Bay is still a good football team. I still think they're one of the best teams uh, in the NFC. And do I think they're going to get over 11 and a half? Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not betting on it. That's why it's plus money. <laughs> the reason Vegas or the odds are plus money is because they know how hard it is to win 12 games in the NFL. Even for a team that's done it now in back-to-back-to-back years, it's, uh, yeah. it's hard to do. I, I just can't bet on it. AJ, what do you have? Back to back to back to back years. I still think they're going to go 13 and four, but uh, part of it was having a little fun. Uh, you know, there's, I think there's a lot of stuff on that odds list that can go the right way. Um, 11 and five was as simple as it is. That Let's take that back. Not as simple as it is, but as confident in it as I am, I also believe in Aaron Rodgers. So uh, I, I, I just enjoyed that prop bet a little bit more. Um, I do have them at 13 and four still. I think they have a series of four game win streaks in this. Uh, I have them losing in week three to Tampa Bay. I have them losing in uh, week eight to Buffalo, uh, close games and everything, but you know, top tier teams that they're on the road against. Um, and then four game win streaks after both of those. So, uh, I think they're going to have a fantastic season. It's like, like you said, it's only about the playoffs for these guys. Their schedule is um, easy. I mean, they're, yeah. they don't have a tough schedule. It's not, I mean, I don't say easy, but it's not a, it's not a hard schedule. Uh, right. They have a lot of games that they're going to win on there. And it's not something, again, that I'm looking at saying they can't win games. I just think it's it's just hard to bet on. But the schedule the schedule's fav- very, very favorable for the for the Packers. Yeah. I'll keep I'll, – I'll lock mine in at 12-5 and five as well on this uh, Packers team. I think they have a very good season. Uh, and, again, it's really about the playoffs. Uh, but, Aaron, where do we have the Packers in our preseason power ranking? Our preseason power rankings, the Green Bay Packers – they're in the top five. They're in the top five. They're number four. The Green Bay Packers, number four on our power rankings. The Sexy Power Rankings, that's a good-looking list right there. You notice a lot of those teams have been in the playoffs the past couple of years, won their division. Uh, we're not wavering from that. Good quarterback play, stuff like that. I think the Packers fit right back in there with the shot to go back to the NFC title game um, this year. So Aaron Rodgers, maybe a third MVP in a row. Packers will be right there. Packers, number four on the Sac City preseason or I, I guess yeah preseason power rankings man Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers goes three straight years of MVP type football that would be unbelievable that would be incredible <laughs> that would be incredible good catch, good catch. <laughs> his his pre his uh preseason MVP odds is plus uh plus a thousand to win the MVP this year I'll say it now I'm picking him to win MVP again so Ooh, you put money on it I would Ooh. I just don't trust part of the reason you do that <laughs> part of the reason it's a great bet is because he has won it back to back years and he doesn't have Devonte Adams which means if the Packers go 13 and 4 like AJ predicts 12 and 5 and Aaron Rodgers throws for 4,000 yards 35 touchdowns five Where's... or six picks 
Where's my wallet? Where is my wallet? Five, I'm yeah, gonna, five or six picks. <laughs> what are in. they gonna say? Are they gonna say it was a worse year than last year? They can't because they don't even have Devontae Adams. They're, they they have no choice but to say it was a better year. And there were quarterbacks that threw for more touchdowns last year, threw for more yards last year, but were not uh, as efficient as Aaron Rodgers. And if Aaron Rodgers does it against this this year, just like last year, he will win his third straight MVP, and it'll be well deserved. I should have put that as the prop bet. Aaron Rodgers well, plus. It's very. It's the great. same thing though with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has a chance this year, if he has a good year, that his he's likely to get it over guys like Tom Brady, over guys like Justin Herbert, because they don't have the weapons, perceived weapons, that those yeah. other guys have. So if they have c- comparable seasons, it'll go to one of those guys. Man, that's a good take. It's a good take. I like it.